Today's episode of Nerd Soup is brought to you by NordVPN. Right now, you can get a huge discount on a two-year plan of NordVPN at nordvpn.com slash nerdsoup. And when you use our code nerdsoup, you'll get an extra month free. NordVPN is great for those who are looking to stay safe on the internet. Instead of signing into a public network where all your data is vulnerable, Nord's private networks will keep all of your internet data safe behind a wall of next-generation encryption. With VPN servers all over the world, you can enjoy internet with no limits or borders. You will have worldwide access to enjoy hundreds of streaming websites worldwide simply by clicking a button. And Nord also lets you connect up to six devices simultaneously, so you can secure them all in any combination. And remember, right now you can visit nordvpn.com slash nerdsoup to get a huge discount on a two-year plan. So don't wait. Secure your internet today with Nord. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of Nerd Soup. I am Bo Oliver, joined here today with Aaron, the Nerd Soup Monkey, and Teddy, and we are back to talk about Invincible Episode 7. We need to talk, pause, about this episode. That's what we're going to do. Hell of an episode. Maybe the best episode of television I've ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> I texted you after and said that was one of the best fight scenes I ever watched. Animated and pro- possibly live action fight scenes. Well, it, it, the way that it was moving, it was moving at such a pace that when it ends, you kind of just realize, oh my God, what what just happened? You have to process everything yeah. that just happened because they threw so, so much at us in this episode. And they've been throwing a, a lot of, at us this entire season. And the fact that it just came together this well was so impressive and just the cut to the credits the silence it was just it sticks with you dude the way they're bobbing and weaving in and out of storylines and weaving things together is flawless like halfway through the season you're like there's so much going on i don't know how they're gonna do this but they just find a way to just weave in each storyline end storylines start new ones it's just perfect right and i guess the two storylines that were not necessarily wrapped up but took the next step we're Robot and Omni-Man, uh-huh. you know, seeing Robot, his plans coming to fruition, and Omni-Man, just his true persona being brought to the light. I mean, he was caught on camera, uh, and now the entire world sees him for what he truly is. And I think both storylines, where where they were left off, it's just pretty much perfect for me. I mean, I think I could spin that if I'm Omni-Man. He attacked me, man. I was fighting a monster, and this dude just comes out of nowhere. And starts... I don't know if it's really immortal. You know? yeah. yeah. I just kid- oh, dude, Obviously, I didn't there's realize something. that was like the guy from the first episode. Uh, yeah, I had no idea. <laughs> we were like, who is this It took me a guy? second to realize it, too. I, that was hilarious. As soon as he wakes up, he wants to smoke. Omni-Man! <laughs> God took two L's, man. I don't He's, know if he can. Yeah, he needs to relax. He got fucking worked. <laughs> so you had the whole squad at you last time. You're not going to try to one-up him. I guess like if, you, like if you're brought back to life, you feel that confidence. That's the only thing on your mind, right? Like, I'm going to get him this time. And no, he just, Omni-Man told him you should have stayed dead. He, just, he, he was hitting him a couple times. But once Omni-Man flips that switch, yeah. he's just, he's a god. I'm waiting for Mark to flip the switch. I thought he was going to do it against that monster. I saw a lot of people talking about that, that the only way that Mark can really beat Omni-Man is if he goes berserk, and we've seen that a couple times. Yeah. Uh, we saw it against the aliens, we saw it against Battle Beast and his crew, and maybe there is just a, a hidden gear that he can unlock where, because he is the same race as his father, he can defeat him. For, from Mark's perspective, seeing that, you He's know... also half-human, though. That's right, yeah, that's not on his side. I wonder if that makes him stronger. No, no way. <laughs> not against him, not against Omni-Man. The way that he views his dad, I mean, it's... You know, similar to a lot of ways that kids view their fathers, that they're perfect, that they are superheroes, and Omni Man is an actual superhero. And for him to see that all come crumbling down, you know, like you said, I don't, I don't know if Omni Man finds a way to spin this. I mean, Mark would be the most important person, right? That's the one guy Omni Man would need on his side. Yeah, I think that doesn't it seem like he has like a justification, maybe not a good one, but from his perspective. I we still don't really know what that is totally, but yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be it's gonna take a hell of a, a spin <laughs> to get <laughs> uh, his son on his side because his wife seems like she still obviously was caring caring for him during the fight while they were watching, but I think she's I don't know I, don't know, almost, I, I think she's past the point of trying to be convinced that he did the right thing. I don't, it's almost like, but if it's if he gives her a good enough reason why he did it, I think. She'll have. I think she'll be back on his side, and maybe even win back the not not the world, but Cecil at least. There's, there's got to be a reason why you did it, because it seems like he's just living on borrowed time. Like right, things are coming to a head soon, and he had to take out the Guardians. Yeah, it could be as simple as the Guardians. I mean, he is an invader. I I still think it's going to go back to it's like Goku. 
the fact that Goku was sent to Earth to destroy the planet and then his memory was erased, so he falls in love, has a family, and he grows really attached to Earth. I think Omni Man's just feeling conflicted between family and duty. Um, I also think it could be like maybe someone from his home planet is like, listen, you were sent here to invade and you're taking too long. What's what's the hold up? We're going to kill your wife and kid if you don't kill the Guardians, if you don't get this moving, something like that. Maybe Where did you pull that from? Just I was just just trying to think of theories. Like, is he being that, blackmailed? Is that he, sounds uh, like really that sounds plausible. You know, he's talking to himself on Mount Everest, imagining the conversation with Mark, and it's something that he just can't get out. Mm-hmm. It's so you imagine that it's going to be a lot for Mark to take in. He he doesn't know how he's going to respond, and I think it's something more complex than I murdered the Guardians because I want to be top dog. Yeah, I do think it's it's kind of not risky, but they're doing a good job with it, keeping the viewers in the dark though. Yeah, not knowing what's going on. You know, this payoff is going to be pretty pretty big. It love, makes him such a fascinating character. Right. I love when she kicked him out of the house and he just fucking flew through the roof. <laughs> yeah. It's like, we'll talk later. He'd rather destroy the house than tell her what's going on. <laughs> yeah, here's $50,000 worth of destruction. <laughs> um, oh, man, seeing that, that scene when uh, all the soldiers came in from being invisible and he just completely destroys them. I felt so bad for him. This show gets very graphic that... It takes the turns that you don't take. It takes the turns that you don't see coming. Right, the way that they use violence. I was thinking about this over the weekend that in superhero movies, you know, the amount of the way that they use their powers, they would be killing each other on accident. And in Invincible, when these guys use their powers, like you're gonna die if Omni Man slams your head on the floor. Yeah, the what violence, do you do? He kicked the girl out of the house and her torso. <laughs> you just torso got flipped around right like yeah yeah yeah, yeah exactly simple like kick. the the physics of this world are like real world physics right. like if, if you could be tossed like that that's what's going to happen to your body so like you said it just comes out of nowhere but they don't shy away from it mm-hmm. that this is what would happen if a superhero and he's such, he's just such a terrifying presence this entire episode you don't know who he's going to take out when yeah. he's uh interrogating mark's friend hand on the car menacing man yeah, yeah yeah menacing no that was that was he was scary in that that scene and I mean, and everything they threw at him this episode. <laughs> I think Cecil's commentary was just so hilarious. Like, this should hold him for 30 seconds. Yeah. What was it $400, $400 million worth of equipment he destroyed <laughs> for a nosebleed? Yeah, $400 million nosebleed. Most Shades expensive of Thanos, nosebleed. Right? All that for a drop of blood. Just mm. can't touch the guy. No. He's a fucking beast, man. There's a whole planet of him, too. That's crazy. <laughs> wow, that's scary to think of. I wonder if it is a thing where on Viltrumite or Viltrium they don't have their powers. But no, they said that they do, right? Yeah. They're all just super powered. I wonder who's the top dog there. Right, yeah, it's a Targaryen situation, right? Where what the happens? Targs were whack in Valeria. What happens with Krypton again? Are they all Supermen? No, they're like normal people, but their their gravity is like a hundred times stronger. Oh, uh, right, yeah. right, okay. Different sun. Yeah, the sun so. makes you stronger, or at least made Superman stronger. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, they throw the kaiju at them. That was fun to see. Callbacks throughout the season. Did you guys? Are you guys wondering why... He left his uh, his cape around. I mean, he said he was like, part of me wanted you to find it or someone to find it. Because it's like he, he has – the guilt is there. He feels bad about what he did. You know, I, I don't think he's necessarily a bad guy. Yeah, I think it, it's – like I referenced this on the last review, Tony Soprano or Mob Boss come be, being honest with their family. It's I guess it's it feels better for him to share it with the people that he feels like he can love and trust. Um and like you, like he said, I wanted somebody to find it just to see their reaction. Um, and you wonder with Debbie, you mentioned that you think that she's just going to be past trying to bring him back to the light because he, I mean, <laughs> for her, it must have been tough watching that because he's just such a destructive force. And Cecil, I love a cold hearted pragmatist saying, hey, if I have the opportunity to kill your husband and son, I'm going to do it yeah. Yeah. because they're just I fuck with that. But yeah, I wonder <laughs> if, if Omni Man was like hoping his family would accept him. Yeah, if they would have um, but it, it's it's hard when he's not being honest because whatever the the final secret is, like the true motivation, it's he feels like people can't handle it. Not even his family. Um, not even Cecil. Cecil says, you know, we were friends for twenty years. You fooled all of us. What the fuck, man? There's a funny uh panel in the comics where he Cecil says it costs the taxpayers five billion dollars every time he teleports. <laughs> <laughs> so I was thinking about that in the back of my mind, like, God damn it. Government waste. He, he was nice at the teleports. <laughs> he, was, he teleported like six times. <laughs> Too quick. Yeah, Omni Man grabbed him at the end when yeah. he grabbed his tie. But that's, I mean, the finale. 
you imagine it's going to be an emotional finale for for Omni Man's immediate family. Yeah, I mean the way it all ended, like you said, the kind of uh, Reigns of Castamere type vibes where it just cuts to the credits, no music, no cold ending, and you kind of just left waiting until next week to see kind of the what happens next. Like, wh- where do we go from here? And I think if Mo- if anybody, Mark is the one who could understand the most being that he is similar and that he has powers and the way he views his father but i think something's got to give there where we are going to see mark go against his dad yeah i'm starting to wonder if omni man is a one season type of thing where he's the antagonist for season one and then all these other storylines that they've kind of set up come into play season two and three or maybe he goes somewhere maybe he leaves earth and uh, it's an eventual grudge match in the future. Yeah. Omni Man returns. Mark is a bit more mature, so possibly he can beat him. Um, I, I don't know. He's clearly the best character in, on the show, so I would like to see more of him. I mean, this Omni. the way that people are telling stories with Evil Superman is just so fascinating. We're seeing it across the board here, and uh, he may be the best version that we've seen in recent memory. Yeah, because he's not fully evil. At least we don't think. Or it doesn't seem. Right, like, Homelander's got, like, mommy issues. <laughs> he's, like, he's yeah. way more sociopathic. Yeah. Like a troubled individual. And Omni-Man seems like he's just caught between two worlds. At least that's how I see it. I think I think Omni-Man is just a, uh, I don't know. It contradicts what I just said earlier, but he could just be a bad guy. And this it's just coming cruel. to a head now. <laughs> like, when, he, when he's training with Mark, he's never cruel. He can be tough on him. He can be a bit of a yeah. hard ass, but... He never, I was going to say he never intentionally puts him in harm's way. <laughs> Meanwhile, he got his shit, let him right into the, the beast. That den. wolf, what, what, what the hell was that guy? The battle beast, yeah. <laughs> he seems loving, like he is a loving father. I mean, Sandra O's Debbie says it, like you've been, we were all friends with these people. Like I can imagine yeah. Omni-Man at a barbecue, you know? It would be unfortunate if he is a one season, because I, I do want to see more of Omni-Man. Well, the performance, the character, it's just J.K. Simmons has been He's killing the man. it. That voice. Yeah, it's such a great voice. Makes me want to grow a mustache. <laughs> it really does. <laughs> Just that voice. I don't think it comes with the voice. The mustache? If you can rock a mustache, Sam there's a Elliott. reason why you rock the mustache. No, yeah, yeah no, you have to have the voice first, then you grow the mustache. You know you can grow the mustache. I think, yeah, you know what? I'm going to grow a mustache then. You don't have a mustache voice. Mustache voice, <laughs> the mustache voice needs to be like uh, a bit more uh, like this, you know? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Coors Light. Yeah, I see. Bored. What are you, a 1920s? <laughs> <laughs> this guy's a 1920s uh, horse racing announcer. Every time I shave, I leave the mustache just for like a couple just minutes. Just see if it, how terrible it looks, right? <laughs> That's what I do. I just did it to Elena, and she's, she walks in the bathroom and says, ew. And I shaved it. <laughs> well, with a group of friends, you can't rock the mustache because then everyone You're calls roasted. it mustache. Yeah. Nash yeah. always loves Oh, hey, mustache. Nash can rock it a bit. Uh, but Omni-Man's got an all-time great mustache, man. He's a salt and pepper super daddy. Uh, I want to... Uh, I want to touch on Mark and Amber, you know, because okay. we, we saw that their relationship came to an end there, which I thought was kind of bogus. You got to know the fact how you can't just trust anyone with your secret identity. I mean, we, we got, we found out it's been eight months since the Guardians died. So yeah. that's one flaw with the show is Mark and Amber's relationship. Like he's been stringing her along for eight months. So you do kind of, I kind of feel her pain, but when she says that she kind of knew then I don't get how you still stay mad at him and still dump him after that. You're just adding to a bad cause. Maybe Mark and Amber's relationship may be the weakest aspect of the show so far. Mm-hmm. But I think it, I, I don't mind it because it's despite, I've been saying it review after review, it's balancing your personal life and the superhero life. It, I guess it could have been done better. Amber seems like a. She seems understandable. <laughs> like she's understanding. Right. But, yeah. Like they're not being consistent with their character. Mm-hmm. Like that breakup just. I don't know. But I guess they're kids, right? Kids get emotional. Yeah. She seemed a little sad at the end. And maybe it was a good move, man, when she was watching Omni-Man. <laughs> it's like, what the yeah, fuck? Dodge a bullet here. Psychopath. That's, <laughs> that's a huge red flag. Mark and Adam Eve just seem like like it's destiny. You know? well, that's the couple that's supposed to be together, but they're never all together. Right, yeah, that they were kind of leading into this. A little bit of a love triangle, but it just makes sense. They're both superheroes. You yeah. know, it's easier. <laughs> yeah, just work, yeah, the schedules work out better. And they share a nice moment in this episode. Uh, before mm-hmm. shit starts to really go down. Yeah. I, I like her character. I think um, that seems like a great way to wake up. Coffee and it's in the, the woods, hanging out. It still doesn't... I don't I don't see, like, an insect screen, so could get no. annoying. So. <laughs> Probably still very buggy. 
Probably not a shower. I don't know if she has running water, but <laughs> she just appears herself. She just like makes herself look clean again. Yeah. <laughs> does that does that really count though? I guess. Oh yeah, yeah, hundred okay. percent. Yeah. Right. She can whip up a fucking shower in a snap of the finger. <laughs> That's a sick power. But yeah, I think their relationship, uh, it's weird because I think Amber, her wanting to have Mark trust her to, enough to tell him, I think that that's valid. But, you know, Mark's situation too, he's new at this. So I think it goes both ways there. Um, I think they'll end up figuring it out because I think they both still obviously care for each other. And I think with uh adam eve i think she's just kind of i think she's like starting to come into her own and i think that's kind of like a good path for that character where she's still trying to figure out she's not with her team anymore and kind of carve her way into this world while she's uh on her own so uh, she doesn't have to be with mark yeah i I know i know what you're saying it makes sense like she she is she's finding herself like she knows what she wants to do now and she she was only there for three days it's only been three days since she went out there She's saving, or she just say in three days I saved more lives. The environment. Lives. You know what she says? She's like I saved more lives in three days than three years. I think she said. Right. Yeah. 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 No. I guess it's 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 weird the calendar for yeah. this season. But we saw her go off on her own. That she can make these differences without saving a city from an alien invasion. You know that mm-hmm. it's things that superheroes don't always focus on. But she knows that duty still calls, and she's ready to go when she right. has to yeah, go. Right. Yeah. She's just like a like Mark has a lot could learn a lot from her. Yeah. That's the that's the thing. Adam Eve is a veteran hero where she she's such a veteran that she's retired from being a hero to, <laughs> to move on to things. <laughs> or yeah. Eighteen. The things that she thinks are more important, but she could still be dragged in when mm-hmm. she sees you know something going down. Um, and Mark, like I said, he he still has a lot to learn because even when he catches up to her, he's like, "Oh, I'm just here to make sure you don't get hurt." Like, bro, like she should have just turned him into a fish right there. <laughs> like, have fun being splattered on the floor, you idiot, baby. Maybe I'll save you. Yeah, you stupid <laughs> dick. <laughs> um, but Mark, yeah, Mark in this episode, I mean, he's been taking his licks throughout the season, right? He hasn't really gotten yeah. his only victory is getting his powers and being accepted by his father. But ever since then, he's just been getting his ass beat. So, dude, you could see why he's you know, he's not having the best time. And I then he gets the opportunity to, to team up with his dad. And his dad does that. I completely forgot when they went to Mars. What happened with that? With that? Uh, the, the what Mark says is their dogs. They came back to Earth. No, no, they um, one came back to Earth. Yeah. Yes, yes. But all uh, it takes is one. Right. Yeah. No. No. That's gonna. That's probably gonna be a season two thing. Yeah. No. Oh, they, they killed all the Martians. Yeah. That's how that episode ends. <laughs> and they killed all the Martians. We have that guy that was resurrected in the tomb in Egypt. Uh. <laughs> I guess they still have more to more to wrap up. Yeah, they can't happen next episode. Yeah, that, it's going to be next. No, no, season. these and obviously Battle Beast, of course, is. I'm I'm assuming he comes back, dude. This is like they're, set, they're setting up future future. Like they they can like really work with this. This is it's interesting, really nice. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's got some good show too. Game like, of Thrones flavor to yeah. it, right? People love that. That that's a comic book thing, you know. The like it's not this story arts. right now is what's keeping me wrapped up. It's everything you know right. it's not the omni man story that's making me want to watch it's everything they're doing in in these episodes they've done such a great job of balancing it all of setting up, up everything but keeping the omni man story so personal and so uh engaging for the audience yeah and the other big storyline this episode robot <laughs> finally figure out what he what, what he is and what he was trying to do I guess he's just like a super genius that was stuck into yeah he's yeah. in the cryogenic chamber and created robot to kind of be him, be right. his like, be his body. Yeah. And delightful I, though. You know, I'm happy. He's not a psychopath either. Th- this, this was incredible. <laughs> I thought this was the best part of the episode. I was freaking out during this when, I, when no, they transfer the consciousness. Yeah. And he's like, he doesn't know who he is, and they're like, you know, it's not tra- it's not transferring, it's just a copy. Yeah, yeah. So it's like your new you remembers your past life. We talked about that like with Westworld. Right. Like, like De- it, Dolores, yeah. And then if you I hate I hate thinking about this idea of me being cloned and then <laughs> killing me off and then to you guys They make it believable. It's like I never though. left. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but to you you're dead. Right. Like I'm fucking dead. Like yeah. his the little you know, the original robot, he's gone. Um and it was it was sad. You know, got me thinking philosophically, but it was disturbing and, like I said, sad to to watch this character kill himself, wheezing his <laughs> last words, like "Go experience everything we couldn't." I, I was choking up. 
but also like breathing heavy because it's like <laughs> it's making me breathe heavy. <laughs> yeah, it's like yeah. watching you not being able to I, breathe. I don't like how you can't breathe. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, all of that was it was just very fascinating, very interesting. Yeah, gets your mind running. And Rex Blood's body, <laughs> right? Yeah, no, it's Rex. It's even funnier body. when he walked in on the Guardians and Black Samson was like, "You didn't even ask." And Rex is like, "That's not the problem." Here. <laughs> yeah. uh, I'm starting to really like Rex's character too. I thought he was, I thought he was a bit douchey. I mean, he he was a douchey character, but you know, he, he's he, grown on me. Yeah. Well, I don't hate him as much anymore. It's we- <sighs> he's less obnoxious. He's starting to to realize what it means to be a hero when he puts it together what happened to the last Guardians. After he found out, man, he yeah. he knows he's got to like start taking shit serious. He's like, it's we're like, the last hope? Wait, something, something against some, Omni-Man? Yeah. <laughs> something weirds me out, though, about the robot monster girl thing. Oh, uh, me too. One of my friends made this point that from her perspective, it's flattering, but super creepy. Because they're both You don't know how older. to feel about it. They're both, yeah. like, mature and older. <laughs> right. Inside, but on the outside, they're both kids. That is weird. Now, think you're, make, yeah. you're making me think about it, and now it's making me feel dirty. Because in one way, because <laughs> in one way, it like makes sense, right? But in the other, it's just not, it just doesn't work. Yeah, she's 28 and he's 30. I think he says, but they're both in like 16 year old bodies. <laughs> yeah, no, it's it's very creepy. The fact that it raises these questions, and we're like, oh, that's sweet. Wait a minute. <laughs> yeah. The thing is, though, he is did this, this legal. <laughs> every time she goes monster, she gets younger. So she's eventually going to die. Right. Well, I guess maybe the... Maybe you can figure something out? The idea is it's she like never Benjamin, has to use it again. Benjamin Button. And, right. Yeah. Well, I guess his powers are just to summon the robots, right? And right. Yeah, he's them. got the new Optimus. That was great when the Molly twins tried to install all those in- explosives and shit. <laughs> it's like, well done. Now take that shit out and add this. Uh, yeah, he's... He's like Ultron, basically, with a human body. I mean, that's what Ultron wanted to do, right? Vision was a biological body yeah. made of vibranium, uh, synthetic skin. And, yeah, that's basically what he is. That was a great fight. The Molly twins continue to be so delightful. Every I was time just going to say, I love those two characters. They're very complex, too. They're not just on-the-head bad guys. Well, they are, but there's more to them. I love macho geniuses. <laughs> they just They can beat the fucking piss out of you, but they know how to make clones, and they understand the science. <laughs> It's a. Uh, I mean, what the, they went, they went to a warehouse and built fucking cloning technology. Yeah, and I, I think the voiceover performance has been so good. Uh, their explanations of of what it means to be a clone mm-hmm. uh, was very fascinating. But yeah, that was that was a great confrontation, and they think that you know they're gonna get immortal to be. <laughs> it's so funny. <laughs> Those two got lucky that immortal didn't kill them. Yeah, too. just run through them quick. Like, he's, they're like, okay, buddy. He just breaks the fucking. Okay, <laughs> he says what. Um. Uh, so, immortal. Oh, he 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 has them try to kill the guardians, right? Yeah. He just rips it off. Yeah, he just rips it off and <laughs> flies away. I wonder how strong they are, the Muller twins. Me too. Yeah, they're, they're yeah, just they, like they felt their own. Yeah. I mean, the guardians beat them at the White House, but right, that is true. Yeah, that's all the guardians, though. No, they can't. They can't hold it. They can't hold up against Omni Man. I doubt it. Would you guys have liked to see the guardians, like actually fight, like be a team, or? Are no. you? As I know, like we're all happy with where they're going, but just to see the guardians all together. No, I think because they they really don't matter. Yeah, I think it's it's they're clearly copies of the Justice League. Yeah, and it's just there to show you what would happen if Superman ever wanted it to happen, <laughs> and uh, it's it's done so perfectly. Yep. Because going back to that first episode when Omni Man saves Batman, and Batman kind of just looks at him and continues, and Omni Man goes, hmm. Like, no, thank you. <laughs> yeah, right there you can see, like, yeah, I'm about to kill these guys. <laughs> these fucking assholes. I'm dying to know what it is, man. I can't take it anymore. Yeah, I'm, I mean, I can't wait for episode eight. Me too. Holy shit, what a season this has been. The penultimate, bringing back feelings of Game of Thrones. and I kind of felt like a Blackwater where you don't know who you're rooting for because mm-hmm. do you want them to stop Omni-Man? Do you want <laughs> Omni-Man? Like, I wanted them to stop Omni-Man, but I also want Omni-Man to see Mark. I just want everything to work out. <laughs> you know? I just want all of them to sing Kumbaya. Like, can we just forget what happened to the Guardians? There was a logical logical reason what happened. Maybe you're just testing right? them. It's like, oh, if you can't beat me, you know, maybe you don't deserve the job. Yeah, that could be it, too. Imagine but, uh, that. He didn't run that by Cecil. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't have uh, to murder them all. <laughs> yeah, I wonder where next episode picks up, if, if it's going to be a direct continuation, or if it's going to be one of those things where all well, the characters are separate and... 
I, I just want that conversation. I yeah, want the way he ended it, I'm hoping that maybe him and Mark just like dip and go to the mountains like they. Mark, I'm a scumbag. <laughs> I murdered them in cold blood because I wanted to. Mark, I'm a psychopath. <laughs> I, can't I don't love it. you or your mother. <laughs> I have no feelings. I'd rather that. I'd rather that. And then he's a bad guy. <laughs> <laughs> Where's your God now? <laughs> I'm going to kill you. <laughs> I'm going to turn this planet into a box of Pringles. The thing is, I don't think Mark can take his dead. I really don't. Even if he does tap what he has to tap, I don't think he can take Omni Man. Well, I, I did team up him, Adam Eve, maybe some of the Guardians, those cyborgs from last episode. Bro, those cyborgs were getting licks on him, man. I mean, no pun intended. Wait for this. <laughs> what are you laughing at? Where's the pun? <laughs> they were biting him and no. eating at him. Okay. <laughs> yeah, they were biting him. <laughs> yeah, that was. An, I hate that dude when people bite skin. And shit. <laughs> it looked like, like dude. It, it, it felt like I was being bit. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I can always like feel it. Yeah. yeah. When a mortal was trying to dig out his eyes. That's a cheap yeah, shot. Yeah, yeah. That hey, that, that's, that's what happened to me at Lily's that night. <laughs> they were digging their f- fingers in my eyeballs. <laughs> Dude, you uh, got into another fight? No, that, that was the last time I was at Lily's when we got into that big brawl. Oh, okay. When all of us got knocked out. I thought you out. said last night. No. Um, I, was, <laughs> I wasn't there. Uh, what was I going to say? Um, dude, that, that one shot of Omni-Man with the red eyes. <laughs> that shit was so funny, man. He's uh, like, you really had to do great. that? <laughs> <laughs> um... He slices him in half with his fucking fingers, dude. The way Cecil brought back <laughs> the uh, Sinclair was a nice touch. It's like, hey, we needed this guy, right? Mm-hmm. They mentioned it last episode that these robots may be able to uh, defend him off. They weren't, and D.A. Sinclair was all upset. They had to drag him out of the control room. Uh, I've been waiting for a fucking heat vision this whole season. For Mommy Man? Yeah, still haven't gotten it. Does he have it? I don't think so. Oh. I, and Shazam, I love when they thought he had heat vision. They kept trying for it. You know what's cool? To go off what you just said about uh, Sinclair, Cecil does mention that when they're taking him off. Is that says that we have use for you. Yeah, right. So you, you imagine everything that they do set up with a line or yeah. you know, a subplot that they are going to come back into play, and that's so exciting for, for future seasons. Um, but for this season... Even with... Uh, we still... For next season, too, we have what happens in the... Uh, the boss is his name's Sam too, isn't it? No, uh, Titan. Titan, right, right. Even for like for the next seasons, we have what's happening with Titan and and Mark. Now we double cross them in that office. Yeah, yeah. No, there's a lot to to still touch on moving forward. And I, I don't know. You have any predictions of how this finale is going to end? I want to say I do, but who knows which route they go? They can go literally anywhere they want to go. Yeah, I just it's m- crazy. Mark doesn't strike me as an individual that can be swayed to the dark side. Me too. Maybe he'll flirt with it. Maybe we'll see that tomorrow. Maybe that's a season one cliffhanger. What is Mark going to do? But its I don't even think it's that clear. It's not black and white. Omni-Man's explanation can change everything. Imagine if it's an explanation where we're like, oh, I agree with that. Yeah, fuck the Guardians. But yeah. I don't, I don't <laughs> like the idea of him, like maybe his family was being threatened. Like maybe that's who they introduced, like the Vil- the Viltrumites. Like what you would, said, Omni Man may not be top dog on that on that planet. What, what would make dog? you do what he did, man? There's something serious. So maybe that could be it. He loves his family. He loves what he has. Mark gets his powers in the first episode, right? Yeah. Maybe and and Omni Man seemed to be upset about that. Maybe that's what triggered it. Well, maybe now I think like, it was just more of maybe, like he was happy that he wasn't having powers and he can live a normal. Maybe life. it's something where now that he has powers, like the Viltrumites will know. I think it's gonna be. I think Mark's gonna. Uh, Omni Man's gonna tell Mark they're gonna have their big fight, and Omni Man's gonna beat the shit out of Mark, and he's gonna leave. Not kill him, just beat the shit out of him, and he's gonna leave, and then it'll wrap up some other day. Like, I Mark like will that. learn from his mistakes. Yeah, I think there's there's definitely a possibility where Omni Man can end the season either dead or off planet. Mm-hmm. Um, obviously not Mark, but yeah, it's <laughs> I can't wait. I truly can't wait. Imagine just kill Mark. Imagine, yeah, <laughs> that'd be a turn. Rex Blow just takes them all out. I hate it. Does Rex Blood have a power, or is it just those fucking coins he throws? I, I, <laughs> have, I don't even how know. How is he a guardian? <laughs> I hope they start to explain some of their powers, or how they got powers. I don't know if they'll ever do that. But What's Black Samson's power? <laughs> Who knows? Because he got it back. I mean, we haven't seen it yet. He's just uh, got like a healing machine. He's got like a <laughs> star. beaten to like an inch of his life, and it comes out <laughs> with powers. Yeah. I'll take that. If someone told me I can get beaten to like a... I mean, he had to be nice if he's an original Guardian. They keep poking fun at him, but he won't tell them what his powers are. Yeah. They keep accusing him of not having powers. This uh, These characters are so fucking secretive. Maybe he just beats the piss out of Omni, man. <laughs> Imagine that. Imagine <laughs> he's the one to do it. I, he's one of my favorite characters, actually. Uh, he's like uh, the player coach. <laughs> 
He's always ripping into them, you know. We got to be better. But he cares. He loves them. He was a, hey, he tried to save Invincible. <laughs> got his skull cracked, but he tried. That was a that was a horrifying scene, too. What a show. I mean, right? they're all fighting in that office. That yeah. was that was brutal, man. No, he Battle Beast was... We need to see Battle Beast and Omni-Man, right? Facts. That's the fight we got to see. Maybe he comes back. I thought that was going to be the fight when he bashed uh, Mark's, uh, Mark's spleen with his hammer. Right. Oh, that sounded weird. <laughs> <laughs> Omni-Man, maybe Omni-Man becomes bigger Jaws in this. Uh, not Omni-Man. Uh, Battle Beast, is, like he comes back and everyone's like, oh, fuck. Is he a known guy in the comics? I don't know. Oh. I know Cam's reading them. Son of a bitch. All right, guys. <laughs> we'll be back for uh, for next week's review of episode eight, the season finale. Uh, hope you'll join us. Hope you like this. Comment, share, do all that stuff, and see you next week. Peace. That was a good review. I think they'll like it. Well, would you look at that? It's finally over. Hey, guys. Bo Oliver here for one final send-off. Now, before I beg you guys to like and share this video, I'd like to thank our very special Patreon pledgers. We are very proud of the community we've been able to build here at NerdTube, and it would not have been possible without our Patreon supporters. You guys are the true MVPs of this channel. Everything I've said, you keep the fridge full, you keep the lights on. There aren't enough words to thank you guys, but we'll do it anyway. Thank you. And we have a few videos coming up that have been suggested to us by Patreon pledgers. My Hero Academia, Neon Genesis Evangelion, and Full Metal Alchemist will be reviewed by Marissa, and yours truly, and Castlevania, which will be reviewed by Marissa and Aaron. And if you'd like to consider donating to our Patreon page, you can visit patreon.com slash nerdsoup and check out some of the rewards we offer to our listeners. And really, we'd like to thank everyone who takes the time out of their day to watch our videos. Patreon pledge or not, your support is what keeps us motivated to keep giving the world our opinions on movies and TV shows and video games and pop culture, even though no one asked for it. We're still here, we're still yapping, and we hope you continue to join us. I'm Bo Oliver and I support this message.